If you wanted, you could spend a lot of money on Harry Potter. There's the seven books and the eight films that followed. Visit the Warner Brothers studio set, head to the theme park in Florida and then buy the stuff. Wands, candles, magic potions, duvets, pillows, curtains, chess sets, it goes on. And it's this enthusiasm for Harry Potter that's created a vast and global cultural empire. It started 20 years ago when Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone hit the bookshops and the resulting franchise has made in the process over $25 billion. That's made creator J.K. Rowling hugely wealthy, worth £650 million, having given millions to charities along the way. So how did this tale of a young orphan boy who doesn't know he's a wizard cast its magic over so many fans and their wallets? Barry Cunningham, then an editor at Bloomsbury Publishers, recalls seeing the battered manuscript, which had clearly been turned down a few times. But it reminded him of bestseller Roald Dahl and was funny. Bloomsbury went on to buy the first book for £2,500 and Cunningham warned J.K. Rowling to get a day job as she wasn't going to make a living out of children's fiction. But the book rapidly took off. Bloomsbury boss Nigel Newton said Rowling was invaluable to the marketing drive, conducting moonlight readings to audiences of round-eyed, eager fans. Her real-life rag-to-riches backstory, writing the books as a penniless single mum, became clever marketing too. Later, the simultaneous launches of millions of copies after school at 3.45pm helped to fuel the buzz and aimed to stop everyone from the delivery driver to the bookseller leaking plot lines. The craze for Harry Potter continued unabated. In 2007, as the last book, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, landed, UK book chain Waterstones was reported as having more than a quarter of a million people turn up at midnight to buy it. Today, the book is published in 79 languages. In the creation of the films, luck was a factor. After David Heyman discovered the book as a possible script in 1997, it took Warner Brothers over a year to option the rights. The first film in 2001 was a risk, featuring unknown child actors and British stars, and Warner didn't know how the story would end. But the fans came and the eight Harry Potter film blockbusters became a lucrative repeat business, making billions of pounds extended by the prequel Fantastic Beasts. Fan sites like Leaky Cauldron and MuggleNet also helped drive the business. Melissa Anelli of fan convention Leaky Con says it created an amazing energy that came with being a Harry Potter fan, without which the hype would never have reached the level it did. Rowling has kept strict control over the empire, careful, she says, not to follow every idea for making money. There are no fast food tie-ups and the films have always been based on the books. But the merchandise and marketing phenomenon that is Harry Potter remains extraordinary. Yet to some, the revamped official fan website epitomises an approach too promotional and corporate, losing sight of the vision of the original books. But to many fans and their wallets, it remains quite simply a way of life.